Thank you, everybody. And while you're making your way back to your chairs, um, we have such a great staff. Uh, we had all this pastoral staff, but uh, the, the working staff here is totally awesome. And um, we're honored by each one of them. But we just have the best kids pastors ever. And Jessica and Gonzo work real hard behind the scenes. They're doing a great job with our kids. And Jessica's going to come share some stuff. Let's welcome them. I wanted to I'm going to share about overcoming tonight, and I'm really excited about it. Um, but I do want to just honor Dave. When COVID all began to go down and it was like nobody knew it was going to happen, we come to the staff meetings, and Dave's like, all right, if I'm going to get arrested, I'm going to get arrested. We're staying open. And if I get arrested, then Paul, you're up. And then when you get arrested, and he just like went down, like, and then someone else will stand up. We will stay open. And it was just like to serve under Dave. It's such an honor to have that be your leader. Like, here's where we're standing, and then you're going to stand here, and then you're going to stand here, and this is what we do. So before we get into what I want to share um, tonight, I do want to put my kids at ease because on the first weekend of every month, we have our store, which this is the first weekend because tomorrow is the first. The bonus buck store has been bumped to the second weekend. We are still having the store because I heard there was some distraught children over the store being canceled this month. It's not canceled. It's bumped out. Okay. If we can throw up the first slide with light overcoming, that would be great. Nope, the other one. Don't look. Okay. So tonight I am really excited because we are overcomers. And so we're going to talk about overcoming. And then tonight we, hopefully all of you guys got little pieces of paper when you came in. If not, we will get them to you where you have burn barrels this evening. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about who God is. We're going to talk about light versus darkness. And then we're going to write some stuff down on those papers to give to Jesus and say, hey, I'm done with this. I want freedom from this. It's going to be a really good night. It's already been an awesome night. We've had people come to Jesus. People have been getting healed. This is awesome. So. For light, this is John 1, 5. For some reason, the reference didn't make it up on the slide, but that's okay. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So this is basics, but it's important to go over the basics. When you shine a light on in the room, does the darkness have any power to put the light out, to overtake the light? It doesn't. It has no power. Okay, so with that being the foundation of what we're talking about, Jesus is the light of the world. Then when we get saved, the light of the world comes to live in us. So there's another verse that says we are children of the light. Okay, now what we get to decide is the big thing is who are you going to agree with? Okay, are you going to agree with darkness? So some, some dark things would be fear. Are you going to agree with uh, stress? Are you going to agree with anger? Are you going to agree with division? Are you going to agree with rejection? Are you going to agree with those voices saying, you're not loved, you're not wanted, you can't do this, the, those lies of darkness? Or are you going to believe the light? Are you going to believe what Jesus has said? Are you going to believe the truth? And where are you going to stand? And in our hearts, we're like, yeah, I want to believe Jesus. But a lot of times that doesn't always follow and work its way out. So what we're going to do tonight is we know that the light is stronger. We know that the darkness cannot overcome the light. But we get to decide what we're going to believe. It all comes down to you. And I say this all the time to my kids. Who decides if you're going to believe Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> they know. Because <laughs> I drive it again and again and again. Who decides if you're going to be angry? Who decides if you're going to be fearful? All right. Hear that? That was all the kids' voices? It's my kids. All right. Yes. I'm proud of my kids. Okay. Let's do the second slide. We're going to talk a little bit about giants. My kids are going to be like, not again. I am on a giant kick right now. Like, the story of David and Goliath, I'm like, yeah. Okay. But it's a really great 
like any of the giant stories are really, really great because they're giant, okay? Like for, I didn't measure out this building, but what I had the kids do a few weeks ago in Roar is they all came and stood underneath this beam right here. There's probably giants that are as tall as that one, but I didn't measure it out. So for sure they were this big at least, okay? So I had them come and stand underneath it and look. I mean, like if a creature came at you that was that size, literally, physically, what would you do? Just take a, take a moment. Most of us would not be very excited. Most of us would be very, very terrified. And yet David wasn't. Not only was he not afraid, he was angry at this gigantic thing, okay? So we're not facing giants right now. So throw that in there. But we have giants in our heart. A good example of that is fear from COVID, okay? So when you're standing against this thing that's accusing you, like Goliath, he was like, who are you, the least of Israel? You know, he was attacking his identity. What are you going to say? Are you going to be overcome with evil, or are you going to overcome evil with good? Now, when you're looking at this verse, there's some important things to pay attention and realize with this verse. Do not be overcome with evil. means that you can be overcome with evil. But overcome evil with good means you have the choice to not be overcome with evil, <laughs> but overcome it with good. So this verse, it puts it back on you. What are you going to choose? Where are you going to stand? What are you going to believe? And so I really, like, with tonight, landing on Saturday night, I was like, yes, I'm excited. I want to have all the kids in here. We're going to have a family night. But I really want to slay some giants tonight. So we do this often in kids' ministry, but stuff comes up all the time. And you guys, the grown-ups, get to join in with us for doing this. So what we do in class is we take things out of our heart and we say, Jesus, I don't want this anymore. I break my agreement with this and I give it to you. I want what you have instead. And then we take whatever truth he has and we stand and we plant our feet there. Today we're going to do something a little bit different where we write it on a piece of paper. Um, and then we are going to go out these doors here and we have burn barrels. So we're going to actually watch that thing be incinerated and gone forever. Gone forever, okay? So, um, one of the things when we're talking about giants, Judges 3, 1 through 2 is a verse, there's a couple verses that talk about the Lord leaving giants in the land for the Israelites. The Lord left the giants in the land for the Israelites because there was a generation of Israelites who had not known war and God wanted them to know and understand how to fight. It is important to God that we know how to fight to the point that he left these gigantic beings in the promised land so that his kids would know how to fight. They would know how to stand and say, instead of saying, we're like grasshoppers. Instead of saying, no, I am angry at you. I'm angry at you, blaspheming and saying things against my God. And this is what I'm going to do about it. Okay? The next verse, when we're talking about giants, this is Moses. He said, do not be afraid of the people in the land, for they are like bread for us. Now, we're not talking about eating, actually eating giants. I'm going to clarify that for my kiddos at least. Like bread. Okay? Like bread, meaning that the giants were feeding their hearts. They were feeding their souls. Because when they killed a giant, it's like, oh, God's so good. Killed a giant, oh, God's so big. Killed another giant, okay? So the giants are there for us, and the giants are bread for us, okay? They are there to feed us, which is super exciting, okay? So God wants us to know how to fight, and then when we fight, it feeds us. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to conquer some giants tonight. We got, we've already clarified who decides if you're going to believe God or believe the lies that are coming against you. It's you guys, okay? So you guys are going to decide with the giants that you're facing, are you going to believe the lies of rejection? Are you going to believe the lies of addiction? Are you going to believe the lies of fear? Are, what lies or what, what are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the lies or are you going to believe Jesus? 
most of you in this room have believed Jesus for salvation. But what a lot of Christians do is we draw a line. They're like, okay, I will believe you that I will go to heaven, but I'm not going to believe that you're good enough for this or this or this, okay? Why not just believe Jesus for everything that he said, okay? So we're going to go after it. I wanted to share a story real quick of something, a giant that I recently killed or I'm working on killing. I think it's dead. We'll see if he pops his head up again. Um, but a month ago, I was listening to a sermon, and in the sermon, he was talking about faith. And I was like, God, I want to grow in faith. And the Lord gently but sternly was like, you will not grow in faith until you have dealt with these two things that I've been asking you to deal with for years now. And I was like, ouch, 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 ouch. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Lord. And I'm like, I listed off all the stuff that I've been doing. Like, what have I missed? <laughs> I have done everything that you've asked. And he said, you have not conquered your fear of singing, and I've been telling you to get involved in worship. And I was like, okay, all right, yes, I forgot about that one, okay, number two. And he said, you have not uh, conquered and gotten rid of a spirit of poverty. And I was like, okay, and I felt like tonight I was supposed to talk about poverty for a little bit, um, because that's a giant for a lot of people. So I was like, okay, God, I don't even know where to begin with the spirit of poverty. So I was like, will you show me a picture of what this thing looks like? And so I see this humanoid, weird, leather-skinned thing, but its physical body was impoverished. You could see its ribs and its skeleton and stuff. And when it spoke, it had, you know, like in the cartoon, when like a fart, it's like a stinky vapor-looking thing. I'm just trying to get you along the same track. So when it would talk, this stinky vapor would come out of its mouth, okay? So the first thing it said, I was like, okay, well, I see it. I was like, God, what does it sound like? And he's like, it's not, there, there's not enough. And the stinky vapor came out of its mouth. And then I went, ah. And I was like, ew, because then I could see it. And then I was like, ah, oh, okay, what else does it say, Jesus? And he's like, you need a savings. And I was like, ah. And I was like, oh, I'm, oh, okay, I see that it's a stinky vapor, but God, what? And so, the last few weeks, God's been just, like, prying my fingers off of my understanding of, like, there's always enough in heaven. I don't have to fight for there to be enough finances. I don't have to fight for there to be enough time. There is enough in heaven. And the way that Jesus lived his life was from abundance. He wasn't worried about money. He was like, oh, we need tax money? Go look at the fish's mouth. Duh. When someone was asleep, duh, sorry, when someone was dead, like, dead, he'd be like, mm, they're sleeping. He didn't recognize lack. He knew that Lazarus was dead. He was dead, dead. And he was like, no, Lazarus is asleep. We're going to go wake him up. Calm down, guys. Okay? So for me, Jesus is rewiring, and I'm slowly killing this giant. It hasn't popped his head up, so maybe it's dead. We'll find out. Of poverty. And so I wanted to encourage you guys. Yours might be that. It might be fear. It might be division. Like, the divorce rate since COVID has started has been through the roof. The enemy is attacking family, okay? The attack against the kids has been massive, and that's why we did the summer day camps. That's why we're doing Roar Still, because we need to know how to stand. And so for you guys, we're going to ask the Lord, what giants are in my life? What things have I not overcome yet? Because I want to overcome, and I can overcome, even that shifting of that belief. Because the enemy will say, you can't. You can't overcome this. You can't overcome that. You will always be X, Y, and Z. He's told that to me. He's told that to you because that's one of his lies. And it's a lie. And you get to sit here and decide, am I always going to be this? Am I going to believe it? Or am I going to believe what Jesus said? I believe that he died. Why don't I just believe the rest of what he said? Okay. So can we, I forgot to ask you guys to find soaking music. Can you find some soaking music for me? If you don't have a piece of paper, would you raise your hand, please? And ushers, if I could have your help dispersing papers. <clears throat> Kenny, can you put some soaking music on? Fire's going? Okay. The fire's ready. 
Can you help them find Soaking Music, please? Okay. All right, so <clears throat> while we're getting everybody pieces of paper, I'm going to explain how tonight's going to go, and then we're going to talk to Jesus and slay some stuff, because that's my favorite thing to do, especially on nights like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some quiet time. My kiddos are used to this because we get still, we get quiet with Jesus. What do you have to do to grow your relationship with Jesus? Good job, guys. you got to listen. You can't do all the talking. So we're going to take some time to listen. We're going to get still and we're going to say, Jesus, what do you want me to overcome? There might be some things that are screaming at you already, but he also might poke at some things like he did for me. <laughs> so we're going to ask Jesus what things he wants us to overcome, what things we want to overcome. We're going to write those down on the piece of paper. We're going to pray about those things. And then what we're going to do is... There's double doors here. We're going to open these double doors, and the burn barrels are just to the left. So we'll go out, and you guys can have your own individual time with the Lord of watching that thing burn up, never to be brought back again, incinerated, gone, done. It is finished, okay? And then after that, our fellowship hall, which is right back here, those double doors will be open, and we've got refreshments and goodies and fun stuff back there. So after we do the burn barrels, uh, there's going to be goodies. And if you guys brought your lawn chairs, if you brought your s'more stuff, we're going to just have a family hangout night tonight all together. And I'm really excited about it. So now that everybody has some paper, I want to invite you guys to join me in this prayer, and we're going to ask the Lord what we're going to burn tonight. What are we going to get rid of tonight? What are we going to say, I'm done with this. I'm going to overcome this. I am not going to have depression my entire life. I do not agree with that declaration. I am done. Even, like, medical conditions that you said, you will have this your entire life. Sickness is a lie. I know it's showing in your body, but Jesus died for you to be totally healed. And you don't have to say, I'm going to be sick the rest of my life. Any mental illness, OCD disorders, bipolar, any of that, it's all under the blood. So whose word are you going to believe? It's right kids so Jesus will you show us what you want us to lay down beyond the ones that are in our face Jesus what things would you like us to overcome what, what things would you like us to stop agreeing with and to start believing you instead. I feel like some of you guys are saying like, is it this easy? But it's actually a simple gospel. It comes down to who are you gonna believe? It's a simple gospel for anybody to be able to grasp. Are you going to believe fear? Or are you going to believe Jesus? Whose word? Either way, you're believing a word. Whose word are you going to believe? If you guys are ready, I want you guys to hold your papers up. Say, Jesus, I'm done. I break agreement. It is finished. Jesus, I don't want this in my life anymore. Will you come and heal this area of my heart? 
Help me to think differently. Help me to see differently. And give me the courage to stand on your word. If you guys feel ready, I release you guys to go and find those burn barrels. If you want more time, we're going to leave the music going. So if you want more time to pray and to give stuff to the Lord and to talk about your heart, then you're released to stay.